This is Duncan Holder on Sports 1280, New Orleans. Joining us from Portland, Will Guillory. Been doing blanket wall-to-wall coverage of Pelicans Trailblazers in Portland. Of course, of Noel.com and the Times Picayune. And Will, most importantly, uh, Jeff did not see your cold call tweet of finding good eateries up there. And I was like, Jeff, why didn't you pay enough attention to our co-worker who was begging for help? And Jeff did not help you. It's his fault. Doesn't love me, man. I, I think that's the conclusion I'm coming to right now. A lot of people uh, throw shade at you, bro. Like you can't get a uh, you can't get any love on Twitter from that dude posting that uh, meme about Boogie and going to Coachella or not going to Coachella <laughs> and like having real the real Pelicans diehards. I'm like, man, we can't get no love these days. Well, yeah, wait. I've got no clout. I don't know where any of the food places clout, are. I'm just lacking right now. Will, what what did you end up doing for food? I'm curious to know if you landed at a good spot. Have you got a voodoo donuts? I- I ended up at this really good barbecue spot. I forgot the name of it. I should give him a shout out because it was pretty good. But it, it, I ended up at this barbecue spot a few blocks from my hotel. It was really good, so I was I was happy about it. Well, let's talk about basketball. Obviously, some basketball going on, and look, Anthony Davis is ready to get greedy once game two. And look, of course, we've been talking about this for days, and. The way that the Pelicans won that game, of course, kind of sucked possibly a little life out of the Trailblazers crowd, at least, that night. But I'm assuming everyone in a Pelicans uniform, everyone in a Gail Benson Pelicans hoodie, they are expecting the fullest of energy from, say, the Blazers and their fan base tonight. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think it all starts with uh, Dame Lillard and CJ McCollum, obviously, but uh, this crowd, I think it was incredible for game one, and I would think they'd probably be even better tonight just because uh, this crowd in Portland, they're so invested in this team, and they really want them to win, and they felt like this team had a really good shot, you know, getting the third seed in the West. Dame Lillard is having a, probably the best season of his career, so I think it was shocking for a lot of people to see the Pelicans come here and win that game one in the way they did, so I think uh, they're going to come in, and they're going to be really loud tonight, and it's going to be a big-time challenge for this Pelicans team, though. Well, they've been good on the road this season, but obviously this is going to be one of the toughest environments they played in all year. Well, what's your take on the uh, Mo Harkless availability, and do you anticipate them putting him on AD? Because right now, without Harkless, I don't see a matchup for them that's going to work uh, either with Aminu or or uh, the big guy. You know, either one seems like a mismatch for AD. Harkless might be able to match him up, but. What do you what do you anticipate going on tonight as far as that goes? Yeah, to be honest, I don't even know if Harkless is really all that great a matchup, especially, you know, he's been out for a while now. You throw him into that fire, you can guard A D. I don't know if that's really what you want to do. I think he's probably just one more body you could throw at A D, which will help you probably just want to throw as many different guys at him as possible, try to wear him down. I think that's probably they're gonna be be their plan. But I would say uh Mo Harkless, I think I would, I, it seems like he's going to play just because, you know, it's the playoffs, game two. They lost game one. Guys that really want to go all out to get this game two. So I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up playing tonight. I'm not sure how much he'll play. Probably not that much. They'll probably have him on some type of minutes restriction. But uh, I think that'll be a, a big help for them just because this, this team obviously revolves around their guards, but they really rely on their other forwards, their other wing guys to give them, you know, shooting on the in the corners, uh, uh, hitting the offensive boards. And that's something that's going to be really important going against this Pelicans team where they play that small lineup with three guards and then Nikola Meritage at four, AD at the five. The, this Portland team really wants to attack the Pelicans in, in the paint on the offensive boards and having another guy like Mo Harkless in there uh, be a big help for them. But overall, uh, I think – I don't know how much of an effect he can have, just like I said, because he's been out for so long. But just having that extra body, I think, will help for Portland for sure. Will Guillory, NOAA.com, the Times, pick you and covering the Pelicans up in Portland. Game two tonight, 9.30 tip. Of course, you can listen to that game on our sister station, 99.5 FM WRNO. And, and Will, uh, at the beginning of the show, I was saying how, okay, we know that Portland, they came out cold, specifically Damian Lillard, C.J. McCollum. But we're used to the Pelicans scoring far more than 97 points a game. Uh, Where can they improve offensively uh, going into game two? Yeah, I think uh, 
uh, Alvin Gentry will say, you know, well, it doesn't matter what the stage is. We want to continue to push the pace. And, and I think uh, a lot of people will naturally look at the playoffs and say, hey, that's when the pace slows down. You should probably expect to see more 97 and 95 games. But that's not the way the Pelicans see it. They want to run. They feel like they can score up to 105, 110 on anybody, regardless of the playoffs or not. So I think he's going to really urge his team to push the pace more, run out, and try to get those other guys involved because we saw AD play a great game on Saturday night, scored 35 points, but as a team, they only scored 97. So I would think getting out and running, scoring more in transition, getting those other guys like uh, Miritich, Etuan Moore, some more easy looks, that'll ease, ease some of that burden off of AD and help them get up to 100, 115 where they want to be. So I think uh, it'll be really big for them to push the pace. They want to shoot more threes. They want to get those other guys involved. And obviously, AD is going to get his just because he's AD and he's playing with Rondo and those guys play so well together. But the big thing is tonight is, is is if they're going to be able to get those other guys involved. Each one more, I think he had four points in that first game. Obviously, they want to get more from him. Miritich, he, he really blew up in that third quarter. But other than that, he was kind of silent for the game. They really want to get him going tonight and really get those other guys involved and not act so much of A.D. and Drew to really carry the offense because that's not really how they got here in that last stretch of the season. It was everybody kind of contributing, and that's the way they want to play going forward. I'm curious, Will, what's what's the um, kind of feeling like from Portland there? You've been in that town now for a few days. Uh, what was the reaction to the loss? And, uh, you know, obviously the crowd's going to get into it tonight, but do you feel like there's a little – desperation from this team or how would you characterize the Blazers point of view going into this game yeah I would say there's definitely going to be a ton of desperation going in just because I mean the the track record is so bleak for teams that, that go down 2-0 in a series and especially if you lose the first two games at home I, I think that's just pretty much a you could put a nail in a coffin at that point but I think a lot of fans in this town they were pretty shocked to see this Pelican team I think uh, obviously the Pelicans aren't on national tv a ton People know names like Anthony Davis and Rajon Rondo, maybe Drew Holiday a little bit, but people came in kind of thinking this would be a one-man show, thinking that this Portland team would really roll over the Pelicans in that first game. And it was, it was I can tell you just being in that building, it was a lot of people were just shocked to see they fell behind by 19 in that third quarter. They really didn't expect to see this Pelican team come in and play as well as they did. So I think uh, they were really going to come in tonight really – wanting to urge that Portland team on and really get behind them and have a, some type of effect on that game from the crowd. So I would expect, like I said, that this, that crowd to be really crazy tonight. But more than anything, just from talking to people, uh, you know, just walking up and people knowing that I'm the Pelicans writer, everybody is just remarking that, man, Anthony Davis is really impressive. You know, people really, you know, you hear his name and you see the highlights, but once you see him in person, it's really something. And, and they were kind of shocked to see how much of an effect he had on that game on both sides of the court. And, and and it's really a concern for them that you know he's so good and and so often we see in these playoff series if you have the best player you you've got a really good chance of winning the series so uh, I think they're really going to want to come in tonight and really limit his production really force the other guys to beat them and hope that Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum could be the best guys out there tonight and if they can you got to think that Portland probably has a pretty good shot. Will Jeff thinks that if the Pelicans win this game tonight that the Pelicans are going to win the series. Do you think that that's the case? Or do you think that if the Blazers can win this game tonight, uh, game three could be a hairy game, that maybe pivotal game here in this series? Yeah, I would say if the, if the Pelicans win tonight, I think it's pretty safe to say this thing is over. I, I wouldn't be surprised, like Jeff said, just because we've seen this Pelicans team so many times coming in that Smoothie King Center, and they have these kind of disappointing efforts in front of that crowd. And you know there's going to be so much pressure on them going into that game three. Uh, I think it'll be really intriguing to see how they re- would react if they go into that game up 2-0. But I think if you lose the first two games of, of a series at home, I think that's just got to be such a blow to your confidence as a team. I don't know how this Portland team would really react. And not only that, but it, they rely so much on those two guys at the top with Dame and CJ. If they come in and, and have another bad game tonight, you got to think they're going to start looking around like, uh oh, you know, I don't know if we can really bounce back from this, especially when the other side has Anthony Davis, Rajon Rondo, Drew Holiday, so some of these talented guys. That's such a uh, such a tough task to come back uh, when you have that so much stacked against you. So uh, I think that they're going to play this thing like a game seven tonight for sure. I think that that season's on the line tonight. 
and they're going to give everything they got. And if the Pelicans can really handle that and win this game, I think that tells you a lot about where they are and what they can be going forward. Will Guillory, Noah.com, the time speaking and covers the Pelicans. Follow all of his coverage of all things Pelicans, playoff basketball, Noah.com, and in our print editions, print editions of the time speaking. You can follow him on Twitter at Will Guillory, and he will be hitching a plane tomorrow, coming back to New Orleans, and then he'll be going back and forth and back and forth. If it goes to game seven, you're not going to know what time zone you're in, what, uh, what city you're in. It's going to be wild and crazy. Hey, Will, appreciate the time as always, buddy. Hey, thank you, guys. And, Jeff, show me some love, man. Give me some food spots. I'll, I need I'm, some help out here. I was going to hit you up yesterday, and I actually dropped the ball. So for, when you come back next time, when you go back to Portland, assuming the Pels don't sweep, uh, I will have plenty of suggestions for you. Promise. Hey, that's, that's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. I appreciate you guys. All right. Well, have a good game tonight, Appreciate bud. it. Well, Jeff is not giving our own Will any advice on Twitter. But what is Sean Payton doing giving you advice on Twitter just now? What planet are we on? He's spoken like a, like a veteran horse owner. That's words of wisdom. Yeah, hopefully he's still not riding Dennis the Menace, Bill Parcells' horse. We'll get to this bizarre story coming back here. Sports1280, NOLA.com, the iHeartRadio app. Duncan Holder. Hey,